was the Roadkills on WMTU, your Michigan radio home for progressive music to study by. I'm Mike Thomas, and I hope your Thursday evening is going smoothly. I understand that there's a big freshman chemistry test tomorrow morning, so I know many of you will be up until the wee hours studying for that. Make WMTU your study buddy, along with a big pot of black coffee and toothpicks to keep your eyes open. My brother Keith will be along at the 6 o'clock hour, followed by Kevin Sickle at 10. Hey, Texter, come on over to Jim's Food Mart for all your snacks and beverage needs. Long neck cases of Buckthorn beer are on sale for $6.99, plus bottle deposits, center cut pork chops are $1.99 a pound, and root are $0.38 a pound while supplies last. And don't forget that every Friday, we offer our famous vegetarian pasties fresh from the oven. So stop by Jim's, only two blocks from campus off of Shilton Avenue. Jim's is a proud supporter of Copper Country Sports Team and Husky Hockey. Here's the latest news at 5 p.m. Two tech students were arrested this morning at the opening to shaft number one of the Baltic Mine in Painesdale after police received a tip that someone was seen breaking in through the lock gate at the shaft opening. Police have identified the two as Tim Weglers and Larry Shook, both junior geology majors. Weglers told police that the two entered the mine in search of the mineral datalite, which can only be found at level three and below in the abandoned mines along the South Range. Datalite sells for about $250 a pound. Current owners of the mine have expressed concern that datalite hunters are breaking into the mine, which has been closed since 1972, and that someone will eventually be killed. The two are charged with trespassing and face a fine of $500 and up to six months in jail. The final ore boat of the season passed through Portage Canal this afternoon, loaded with taconite pellets from Duluth Harbor and headed through the Straits, bound for Gary, Indiana. This marks the end of the shipping season on the Great Lakes. The canal lift bridge will remain closed and lowered until next April. The Copper Country weather forecast for the remainder of the evening is... What else? Snow! A low-pressure system reeling in from the Dakotas and Minnesota is pulling up moisture from the Gulf and mixing with an early Alberta clipper. So far today, we've got 14 inches of snow at the Hancock Airport and over 20 inches of lake effect was measured by weather watcher Toivo Vesa at Red Ridge. Another 6 to 12 is expected overnight with continued blowing and drifting. High winds at the Hancock Airport have caused the cancellation of Republic Airlines flights both in and out of Hancock until at least midday tomorrow. Western UP roads are snow-packed and slick. The state patrol is recommending delaying any travel plans until at least tomorrow afternoon. If you do have to go out, make sure you have a full tank of gas, blankets, food, and a shovel. And for you guys and gals in Wadsworth Hall, be careful crossing Highway 41 at night because visibility is expected to drop to about 10 feet as the winds pick up. In sports, the Tech Huskies host the Northern Michigan Wildcats at McKinnis Ice Arena at the Student Center tomorrow night and Saturday. Tech is 2-3 and three in the WCHA and in fourth place behind Lake Superior State and Minnesota. And now let's get back to the music on WMTU. Here's the Nematones. I want you to stay here. I don't want you to go.
Okay, today I received two packages by Comex delivered to me, left at the door, and I didn't order them, but they're addressed to me. So we're going to find out what they are. It's from Ontonagon County Clerk, Michigan. I didn't order anything. Two boxes. Well, I'm going to open up and see what they are. Okay, so there's a letter here from the Ontonagon County Clerk, UP. I'm going to open it up. To me. Dear Mr. Worry, we regret to inform you that Mr. Robert Utala of North Painesville, Michigan, that's my uncle, passed away on July 3rd, 2022, intestate. Oh, that's a bummer, man. He was really old. Our records indicate that you are the only legal living relative of Mr. Utala. In surveying Mr. Utala's earthly belongings, we came upon a box which we are transmitting to you for final disposition. I got two boxes. Mr. Utila's remains were cremated. Okay, I'm glad they're not that. And ashes are temporarily stored at the Ontonagon County Coroner's Office, where they can be claimed until November 28th, at which time they will be interred. Please accept our deepest consolence, yada, yada, yada. Yours really true. Barbara M. Heikinen. Attachment. I don't know what attachment we got. I guess that's what they meant by All right, well, let's see what's in them. So my uncle, Bob, was kind of a character. He was what you call a confirmed bachelor. I hadn't seen him in about 20 years. So he was kind of a boozer. And we got a beer case. All right. And... Okay, where's my phone? All right. Just like open shit. Uh, oh man. Oh, nice. God damn fuckers. Sent me underwear. Dirty fucking underwear and a pack of smokes. Empty, some empty pack of fucking smokes. And Jesus Christ. God damn. Fuck. Beer bottles. Shit. Put these beer bottles somewhere. And what else we got in here? Tape. The fuck. Busted tape. Some kind of... the fuck is this? Uper brainwave translator. This is not his. Hold on a minute. Okay, so this is different. I got this fucking looks like a computer thing. Pretty heavy. I got an old fucking um, VCR player camera, right? And some kind of thing with all kinds of crap in it. And this shit. Zoom the tape goes with that. Apparently they don't teach spelling at this Michigan Tech. Oh, floppy disk. And Michigan Tech. Nineteen eighty nine. What the? Hell? 
I'm gonna I'm gonna have to read this shit. Man, this doesn't look like my uncle's crap. Okay, so I figured out a few things. I've been reading this thing for a while, and what this is supposed to do when it's hooked up is it's supposed to allow you to translate from any language. I don't know how it does that. Um, but it looks fucking dangerous. I don't know why he had this. But I'm going to do some more reading on this and see if they can sell it on eBay. Hmm. Okay, I've got this here tape that I think I fixed. We'll see how it goes here. Um, let me see here. I'm going to put it in here. Let's see how it goes. Okay, is it going to play? what we got here shitty quality I don't I have no idea what this is. that's my uncle there I think so this is something that he shot All right, I guess that's it. Well, I found this picture of my Uncle Bob from about 40 years ago. Yeah, he's uh doesn't necessarily look like a guy who knows how to operate a VCR very well. What do you think, dog? Runa. Runa. Hey, dude. Here's a picture of my Uncle Bob with uh, his tow truck. And then I found this picture of him in later years in, a, in an unguarded moment. Showing off his new false teeth. <laughs> okay, so I've been doing some digging here on the interwebs and looking for this waterhead guy and I found some information in uh, the Copper Country Mining Gazette archives. So here's one from Thursday, December 15th that talks about an MTU researcher missing. And this guy here was last seen last week. Um, it's uh, Alan Waterhead. Um, he left in a Pontiac Catalina, and it was found abandoned on along the ditch on Highway M28, three miles east of Bruce Crossing, Michigan. And the abandoned vehicle was towed to a gas station in Bruce's. And I'm wondering, I wondered if that was my where my uncle Bob worked. And I found that out. And in this next one here um, that I found from that archive is. Thursday, December 21st, 1989, and here, look at this. This is a vehicle, a white 1965 Pontiac Catalina, was pulled from the ditch and towed to Steamboat Holiday Gas in Bruce Crossing, Michigan, by Bob Utila, a contract employee of the station. Utila told authorities that he came upon the vehicle at approximately 3 a.m., uh, and according to Utila, the car was 20 feet off the M28 shoulder and nearly completely buried in snow. 
You know, it said there was no one inside the vehicle and he assumed the driver had caught a ride. Um, so we got here that from, well, I don't know who's this talking here. It looks like Antonagin Sheriff Al Rutzelainen. One of the possibilities we are exploring is that the occupant exited the vehicle and tried to make his way on foot. All right, so there we are, and that's December 21st, first day of winter. And here's what I found next. Body of missing tech researcher found. But look at the date on this. April 13th, 1990. So what happened here is human remains were found in the spring um, on the middle branch of the Otnagan River. And it's by... Um, Waterhead was believed to have been traveling alone in his car. And he was scheduled to meet with the U.S. Army personnel concerning some ongoing research. So they found his body. Um, no foul play. A um, guy named Robert Mackinnon wants to know what happened to the large package that Alan Waterman had taken with him to Washington. And Mackinnon believes his colleague took with him the brainwave device that uses a very small amount of radioactive cobalt. And then in this next article here, it says, it appears that Waterhead attempted to walk west from Bruce Crossing after his vehicle went into the ditch. Mighty interesting. Then I get this thing here from Michigan Tech, um, Department of Computer Science and Electrical Engineering, and the date on this is fall 1990. And we've got our buddy, Mr. Waterhead here. And then we get this um, story about that this guy named Bob Mackinnon, which I guess is who he referred to as his colleague, he worked closely with Alan Waterman, who, um, let's see, he enjoyed drinking beer and peeling stickers off empty bottles. Boy, he's a nice guy. Um, let's see. He says, I can't say much about what Bob Mackinnon was doing, not because of secrecy so much as I didn't know what he was doing. And but it says, I do know that his work explored the use of capturing brain waves from the frontal lobe areas of the brain where language is synthesized. He was trying to tap that pure thought, which he believed could be translated into any spoken or written language. And I did find some reference to some science papers in journals, but they don't let me get to them because you got to be a member or something like that. So What's interesting, and what I'm thinking happened here, is that my Uncle Bob came upon this, saw the case of beer, and figured he'd probably keep it for the guy because it's going to freeze, and took it with him in his a tow truck when he towed the vehicle, and probably forgot all about it. And that's where I got it. <laughs> Okay, I've got the camera set up, and I've got the brainwave controller translator set up, and the camera's hooked up to it. Um, there. Okay, so I've got this iPhone here my iPhone and I'm taking this picture with my old iPhone which doesn't work anymore except it does take good picture so I gotta hook that into here into that thing let me see if I can do that okay I've got just about everything set up and I've decided that I'm gonna try this out not on me I'm going to get one of the dogs to do this. They'll be fine. Come here, dog. <laughs> right here, right here. Just, just one dog is all we need. Just, just stay there for a minute now while I press the button. You'll be a good dog, Runa. It's okay. Here we go. Ooh.
Here we go again. Tark 2. Oh man. Colors. Alright, I'm supposed to press this thing now. And. That again. Okay. I hope that's the right sound. Okay, here we go with the big button. Yeah.